Welcome back. This is part two of setting up WinLink, and now we're going to move to Vera and the HF portion. And so we're going to do a download from WinLink. The download from WinLink is going to be the Vera products, and we're going to install Vera HF next. So when you download this, click save then it is going to open up at this point they tell you to run as administrator uh, I think if you double click it in Windows it probably will already but first we need to extract it and then you will right click and run as administrator now this is Windows Defender. We're gonna click through and run anyway. We, we trust who it is. This is your user account control. And we will accept the agreement if you wanna read it. Here you go. Vera is free to use, but on a limited basis. You can purchase Vera a Vera license for $69. I have not done it yet, but I probably will. So this is what Vera looks like. And what we have to do now is to get it to communicate with our radio and the sound card. So today, I'm going to use the X6100. So we'll go ahead and turn on the X6100. I'm going to plug in the USB-C to my computer and we're going to use the stock firmware. I do have R1 CBU on this micro SD card, but I want to run this with the base firmware. So we're going to plug this into the dev port and on the computer, if we go to device manager, under ports and comms. Okay, so it already recognized it. This is the enhanced serial for USB. Now in previous videos, I have used the Bluetooth link. I just don't like how you get there. I could probably delete these. Yours should have these two if you plug in your X6100. Now, every radio is going to be a little bit different as to the setup, but COM6 and COM8, I think 8 is the one that I'm going to use. So we've already installed it. Now we need to get it to connect to the radio. We're going to go to radio setup. And we're going to select the COM port that we think should work. For our, it says ICOM 7300, but that is because we are using an X6100, which doesn't have its own radio model defined in this particular program. What we're trying to do is to connect to the radio through USB. Now, we have found the correct settings for our radio. Notice that the frequency changed and I'm also going to plug in power because there we go. So let's say that we had an email to send. I don't but let's try to connect to this particular station. So what we're going to do is we are going to click start. And I have the monitor on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and abort this. Okay, so we're back in. I, I, I did something just a minute ago. If you look for other stations that you want, let's just pretend that KE4RJI was a good connection. You can click Add to Favorites, 
and then you you have favorites and you can go through the channel selection and find the stations you can sort them by call sign you can sort them by frequency you can sort them by mode you can sort them by grid square and you can sort them by distance so the distance you'll see that the path quality estimate for some of these is okay but let's just say that WB4UBK on 30 meters. Let's say we wanted to test that one out. So what you could do is hit start. But there's one other thing. Let's go check out our Vera TNC settings one more time. Yes. Yes. Uh... Maybe we want to do both of these, so let's just click update, see what happens. Okay, this is the screen that I wanted to see. So I'm going to move these around. Now, I hope that this video seems linear. I've had a few mistakes that I had to edit out. This is the, what your TNC screen looks like right here. And it shows you all kinds of good stuff. You can see signals on the screen. Again, we're on a dummy load running one watt, so hopefully we're not interfering with anybody. But let's say that I wanted to try WBB, WB4UBK. You can click start. Okay, so we've done that enough. I'm gonna click abort. Pretend that Okay, Q4DMQ. Let's pretend that it did connect and it went through the whole rigmarole, which I will show you an example from another time in another place shortly after this. But let's say that WB4UBK on 30 meters was a good connection. We're gonna click Add to Favorites. And part of preparing beforehand is the before you even need to use this is having a pretty good list of favorites that you have a pretty good connection with so if you go to channel selection let's say that you might need to look a little bit further from where you are to use some of the higher bands so 30 meters 40 meters might be even better if i wanted to have something pretty close like it's the middle of the day right now, so 40 meters for this guy being uh, 893 kilometers is definitely asking to not be able to... See, this one has a pretty good report. So let's, let's click that and let's click start. Again, we're pretending at this point that we're able to connect to the rig. The, on the other end, that is. So I'm gonna hit abort. Let's pretend that it worked. So you can go and click add to favorites and click okay. And now you should have a nice selection of favorites. And that's pretty much everything that you need to get this going. There is one other thing in Vera HF, and that is if your sound card did not come up, you may have to go and select the correct sound card. But now that we have it connected, let's see if we can tune the ALC. So my ALC is about a two, which is pretty good on this particular radio. Other radios, it's a little bit easier to see, but that works. So our sound card is set up. So we're gonna click close. And those are the basic settings that you need to get Vera HF working. Now, if, in just a moment, I'm gonna show you a um, short test on my computer of sending an email 
And using this particular system with my ICOM 7300 in the shack and not at the kitchen table. I hope this has been helpful up to this point. Now let's move on and show you how this works on my HF rig and make a true connection to WinLink using the radio. Now we're going to transition to my HF rig in the shack and I'm going to show you how to scribe an email. You click that button and for anybody that has a WinLink email address, you just have to type in their call sign if they're a registered user. If you want to send it to your Gmail account or anything like that, you can do that too. It will send it to regular email accounts. Then you post it to the Outbox and you can see that it's residing in the Outbox. Now we're going to start the session. Uh oh, you're going to ask me if I want to add that to the favorites first. Yes. So we start it. Now we're going to speed this up just a little bit. And what it's doing is it try it's trying to make a connection. And now it's connecting and connected. So at this point, yeah, that pops up. You can buy it if you want it. If you're going to use it a lot, I suggest you buy the $69, it's $69 right now, version of Vera HF because it's faster and doesn't have time limits. So now it's sending data and this the packets that it's receiving through this, they're not really packets, but they kind of look like it. They're acknowledgments so that whatever information is received is good. And it continues to do that. It checks to see if you have any mail. Then it sends your data, and then it gives you the information, and then you're done. Boom. Look at there. We sent a message, and it gives you all kinds of information. And look, it's in the sent items now. So if it is successful, it'll look like that. It'll take a little bit longer. I sped it up just to keep this thing short. So that is how you install Vera HF and send an email over your radio. I hope this has been helpful. Like and subscribe. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. And here in a minute, we'll have some credits. And when the credits roll, you might see something else to watch.